Hello and welcome to another episode of FPL Journey to 10K, the podcast and series in which this man to my left teaches us what it takes to think and be and play like a top 10K finishing manager. And how does he do that? Well, he's finished in the top 10K himself six times in the last eight seasons and has an average finish of six and a half thousand. And Matt, your camera's working this week. Great to see you. Did my hair. <laughs> no excuses this time around. But um, how are you doing? You good? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Not a, not a bad weekend. Just a little bit of uh, Christmas stuff with my wife's family. So not too bad. How about yourself? Yeah. I, I, a little uh, little birdie told me you were... Your uh, mother-in-law might have not might have been um, saying you should have had more subscribers on YouTube by now. I don't know you told Demanding, you that, right? Demanding. Yeah, I don't know who told you that. I'll, I'll pre-warn you. She listens to this, so she, you're going to get some grief for that comment. Oh, oh well, let, let's cancel that. <laughs> Let's <We, laughs> let it out. out. But, um, uh, I mean, uh, for me, I'm. Uh, I've had the first good good game week of the season so far. It's still open though. It's a bit of a a unique yeah. uh, game week. I don't. Had, I've never seen anything like this from from what I remember in the eight, eight seasons I've been playing. But um, yeah, I had had a good good game week. First first one forever. Um, well, this season and um, yeah, feeling quite good about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll bring it up as we're as we're talking about it. And you, you may as well jump jump in first. Yeah. So um, I well, it's still open. It so like um, like this is the um, provisional uh, kind of like ranks and scores whilst they saw out the Luton and, and kind of Bournemouth game. But like, yeah, currently on 71 points, which was a 200k game week rank, which is cool. So that's my first sub 1 million game week rank, which is really good. So yeah, big old um, green arrow. So it was 1.9 million going into this week and I'm uh, yeah, top 1.1 million now, which is which is cool. And um, yeah, I'm four points behind you, which is um, now yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty happy with that. And then um, I have to say I'm a bit of a stalker. I do keep an eye on where there's like where top managers are. I'm like um, the guy I want to beat every season. I'm only 30 points behind him now, which is is um, not bad considering like the luck and you know, combination of luck and bad picks that I've done throughout the season. So it's not it's not that bad, right? So I think uh, it's always you see this in most seasons though. New is like the red arrows. Keep them low. Like if you've got a, low, a red arrow, let's like have a five percent drop or whatnot. But then when you have a green arrow, you can have a few red arrows. But then when you have a green arrow, make it count, right? So this one was definitely a, a big old one for me. So um, yeah, I'm promising. It shows how like a one big game week, even when you got quite a template team, can make all the difference. But um, yeah, like first first clean sheet I've had all season from uh, Debravka, which is kind of really good. I mean. Uh, I know, I know Pickford got another hot haul. He got like 10 points again, like Pickford. Yeah. And he's been awesome since uh, people got rid of him on wildcard. But yeah, getting a clean sheet from a goalkeeper, that makes uh, a world of difference, right? So yeah, first one I've had all season, which um, am yeah, kind of really happy around that. And then, yeah, full suite of clean sheets. So Simakas got it for Liverpool. So I'm kind of happy with that. And then, yeah, Saliba and Gabriel. So I think we both, both made that bet going in game week nine, game week 10, that Arsenal had the best defence in the league. And some really nice fixtures from a defensive point of view. I'll tell you what, this is like an example of what could have been because Arsenal have had the best defense in the league by some extent over that period. But they've just given away, they've been like Man City of previous years, right? Where they've given in just a random dodgy goal where their defense has been great and they've conceded one shot and they've let in a goal. So it was nice to get that, that double clean sheet from Gabriel and uh, Saliba. But um, their defense has been, been good. I know I was texting you, it was yeah. like, no shots yeah. at all in the first half from Brighton. Expected goals conceded zero. And I was like, when are they going to concede? It's in inevitable, right? But um, they, they they held out. It was for, interesting. Um, yeah, they, they managed to hold out. But interestingly, so Brighton uh, have gone. I might that's this number might be wrong. It's definitely in the thirties. But Brighton have scored prior to the Arsenal game in about thirty-two games in the Premier League in a row. Um, so yeah, I didn't go in with any hope at the double clean sheet. So. So fair play to us. No, but, um, but honestly, their their defense is elite levels, right? It's probably one. It's probably up there with the best that we've seen in the Premier League for like last couple of seasons. So like it's up there with the top Man City defenses. It's actually quite. Um, they're attacking great now, but their defense this season has been awesome statistically, right? So I think um, you know for their 
title challenge and trying to go for the league, that's always a good good way of achieving it, right? It's getting a real solid defence as your framework yeah. and foundations. But um, yeah, like happy with that double Arsenal defence. I think we went with that prediction that they'd be great. They've been unlucky, but yeah, finally came through, which is which is cool. And then yeah, um, Gordon returned for six points, which is good. Um, on Gordon, I'm really happy he returned because I had a, a dilemma of whether I'd bring in Poro for a hit. Or of course, yeah. eight points. But when you're weighing up where a hit works and whether it's actually kind of optimal and you've kind of like um, the one on it, you've got to take into account who you would have subbed. So if I brought in Poro, yeah. I've kept in my kept the same back three: Simicas, Saliba, and Gabriel. But I would, I would have benched Gordon because he had the injury and fitness doubts, right? So I'd have benched Gordon. I'd have brought in Poro. Yeah, Poro for eight points versus Gordon plus four points because it would be minus four points. I'm up two points, so I'm happy with with that. And um, yeah, Gordon continues to look good in home games. Like he was, you know, good expected goal involvement, and he's quite threatening, right? I think he could have could have got more than six yeah. points. Um, Palmer was excellent. Like he's the main man at Chelsea for sure, and you know it's nice having him for their great fixture run. He looks secured and nailed, and it's great that he's getting good returns and good input in terms of his underlying stats outside of pens as well that was the worry right there he was a bit of a pen merchant but yeah he got his 14 point all happy days son and salah both blanked salah captain um i think he was the obvious choice and pretty much anyone who's serious would have would have captain salah i think you just take it on the take it on the chin i think statistically they were both okay right both son and salah looked all right and then um watkins got his return i think it was a little bit fortunate, right? I think it was a bit of a game state sort of thing, but happy that, that he got his return and max bonus. Solanke, we don't know if he's going to lose his his points, but I think he, he was on for nine points, right? Uh, like a, yeah. a goal score yeah, yeah. and max bonus. Um, the bonus points have um, been removed and we'll see what happens there. I think, I think on that one, I think the pathway, I think the... FPL game are going in the direction towards is that because they're extending the game week, they're trying to find a way to cancel points from that game. Because um yeah. do you remember back in the the year of COVID cancellations, every game week we just yeah. played. Even it wasn't as cancelled, it wasn't stopped. It was like every game week because of their their code um and their system, it just had to keep playing. So I think they're trying to find a way of eliminating those points which are applied automatically to get rid of those points and we'll see what happens before Thursday. I think um, we'll have a debate of whether that's lucky or, or unlucky. And then, uh, yeah, so Slanky got his six points, Watkins with nine. And then Darwin, <laughs> Darwin, yeah, he got his one point. Um, yeah, that was a mistake getting him, you know, a couple of games. He's been sent off again. Exactly. I mean, the thing is, like, his, the last five, six game weeks as well, his underlying stats haven't been incredible, but the reason you've got him is like, you know, he's a bit wasteful, but he has incredible underlying stats. And like over time, you think he'll even out that he'll have some returns. His underlying stats are okay. They're good. It's okay to good, but they're not great anymore. So like, yeah, he does look a look a concern, but um, there's a bit of a dilemma, right? Because obviously Salah's away game week 21 to 23 at least. And you think that would mean Darwin starts every game, but yeah, he's a problem at the moment. He's a problem. Um, but yeah, 71 points. Super happy with that. Massive uh, green arrow and I'm on my way to a more respectable ra- rank. And uh, yeah, as long as I beat you, hey, then that's, that's the bragging rights. Well, well, I mean, but you should beat me. The Bravko on your um, Yeah. No, that could be luck. But West Ham kept a clean sheet. So if Ariola did start, he'd have got at least six, <laughs> I'd like yeah, to think. Yeah. So... Um, I think yeah. So so similar team to you. I've I've ended up with currently sixty, uh, minus four, which I'll come on to. But uh, God, Dubravka to come off the bench for for Ariola, who, who was on the bench when Fabianski started there. So that'll take me to a net of sixty three. Green Arrow uh, up from one point two to one million. Mm-hmm. That 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 seven point should see me into the top million, which is cool. Um, obviously that something to to build upon, but nice to not have to put an M at the end of Marenkin and to change that to a K, that's got to start somewhere. Um, but yeah, I went I went for Ariola over Dubravko. I just I was just looking at Newcastle. They weren't impressing me. Their defence, they were letting in goals. Trippier was out. I didn't realise Dan Byrne was back. I thought I thought it was going to be a bit more makeshift than it was. They were playing a Fulham side that had scored 10 in their last two. 
Yeah. I just thought I'll I'll just I'll just hedge my bets. If Newcastle keep a clean sheet, I've got the shells on the pitch. So I got the six points for him anyway. And I'll just hedge my bets. So see mm. if West Ham click one I, and then I'll then I'll get one there. Yeah, I was gonna ask you why why you went Aviola over the Brack because like you every week you said West Ham is a bad defense, right? So uh, I was a bit yeah, disappointed they do. that. But um <laughs> You know, you said you said Trippier's out, but Trippier has been the reason why they've been conceding goals, right? Let's be honest, the last couple of game weeks, it's true. been his mistakes. That is true. A lot of the time, did, did but, get but, a, I, I get what you're saying. You yeah. didn't know, you didn't know Botman was returning to the, as a sub, but he's a great defender, right? So he, he came on. Yeah, yeah. You didn't know Boone was going to play, so you'd think it'd be just a random back four. I get it. So, I get it. I thought, and I've already, and I've, I, I thought, well, I've covered them with those shells. So if they do mm-hmm. keep a clean sheet, yeah, I'll be annoyed, but I'll I'll get one clean sheet. Most people only have the so I'm I'm just yeah, I'm just balancing like that 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 score. There. Um, mm-hmm. The only other different differential I've got compared to so you had Gordon for six. I've got Saka who got three. He was on for an assist. Rightfully got it taken off him. It wasn't his mm-hmm. assist. Um, it was rightfully removed. So he he ended up on three because of. Because of the clean sheet, he's had his luck. He's uh, had his luck with like suspect assists. He's had he's had one or two yeah. in his little run of like consistent returns, but nothing happening. But um, yeah, I was, he was my threat. Do you know um, what's what's the website? Live FPL is a really good good website. Yes. And they, they show who's your threats yeah. around your rank and like um, yeah, Saka was a skull against me. So at like, any point he would score would be like a, my rank would go plummeting. So uh, yeah, fortunate for me. Um, but we said it previous week. He. He has been getting returns, but he hasn't been great. And I think Arsenal's attack at full stop hasn't been great. It's their defence, which has been impressive, in my opinion. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think it's, um, yeah, he was, he was I, mean, I, I felt very fortunate if he'd have been given that assist. So I wasn't surprised it, it got taken away. Mm-hmm. You know, the defender basically jumped in and, and hit the ball before it, it ended up getting to Jesus. So... Um, that was that up front. Darwin Nunes could have very easily been sent off. He got a booking. I don't know whether you watched the game, but took a booking early doors and then started sarcastically mm. clapping the linesman. I'm like, yeah, there's an attitude problem with him. Um, could have very easily gone. And then mm. what happened at the end of the game when Dallow got sent off for two bookable offenses for base for, for descent? It's just no consistency. Um, now as a Liverpool fan, that obviously worked in my team's favour, but just just didn't feel right. So um felt felt fortunate just to get a one from Darwin Nunes. But yeah, he's the same as you. He's very much on the chopping block for me. I can see him going. I've got the money in the bank to get Hallam back when he when he when he returns from injury, whenever that may be. But yeah, overall game week on a green. That green should increase when Dubrovka comes on the pitch. Whatever happens with Solanke, if I get the points great. If I don't then cash comes on. Um, but either way, I've got more points to come on because of the Bravka. So yeah, not a bad, so, not so, a bad game week. Yeah, solid, solid week, isn't it? But like, um, your move was what? You, so you did minus four. So you brought in Solanke for Haaland. I know that, and you brought Son in yes. for. Who did you bring Son? Gibbs White. Gibbs White. Gibbs White. I, I guess you can see the so, see the appeal. Um, of, yeah. So uh, it did of, of it end up even announced. Yeah. Potentially, well, it might well, not in the end. Good. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, my, my move was um, Harlan yeah. to Solanke, and like, I guess there's some really clear views on there. Was who was the guy? Was the FPL Tony? He was the the guy leaking the news yeah. when he, he pretty much. I think Pep's pre- press conference gave it away anyway before he even like confirmed it. it was like, yeah, he's going to be out for for a while, and then you know, FPL Tony was like, yeah, it's going to be out. But um, I guess we, we we discussed it last week. Is that surprise, surprise? All of Harlan's mates and his dad. Has got a good view of what his injury Solid. situation is, right? So, <laughs> yeah. despite people we, doing much for thinking that he's just having a rest against Luton, like yeah, he was obviously going to be out with all those indicators. So yeah, Slanky was the in both our teams. Slanky was the obvious option. I think if you didn't have Watkins, there was a debate to have you had. But um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens um, with Slanky's points. But um, I think for me, it's is unprecedented, right? I can't remember a game being postponed for. Like a you know a player situation, you know, it's not an injury, right? But like a, you know, kind of a health problem yeah. with a uh, a player. And I cert- well, certainly this is the first time I can remember for FPL that it's continuing a game week running is kept open, right? So these points aren't locked in yet, right? So it's the, it's the first time, right? I can't I can't remember. I can't. But no, I can't. I can't remember. Mm. I was thinking about maybe when Fabrice Moemba suffered a similar um, 
situation. Yeah, but I don't know. Like 2008, maybe? It like, must have been. Yeah, it might have been maybe. before I before know. I even started playing. Obviously, it was uh, the Eric, yeah, Ericsson one, was, but that was outside of fancy, right? That, that they just had a pause and, and played uh, played a, played again. But you know, the guy was unconscious for quite a long time, right? I think Lockyer, like frankly, yeah, yeah. was conscious within within the game. But then um, I think people could people can ask the questions of him. I think there's a bit of a debate right on X around like you know, should you be asking about Solanke's points? But you could you could feel sorry and concerned for Lockyer as well as asking those those points given we're playing. Um, FPL, but um, what do you think is going to? What do you think? Question for you: What controversial? What do you think will happen? And then what do you think will be fair? As a Solanke owner, with yeah. cash on the bench. <laughs> Good question. So, if the game is going to be completely replayed, remove us points. You get your first bench. Yeah. If they're going to replay it from the 68th minute or the 63rd minute, whenever whatever minute it was, mm-hmm. keep us points. But then. And then it gets it. Then it gets complicated, right? Because then, do you give him a game and twenty three minutes in another game week? What happens to the bonus points? That's a, if, if, I'm assuming the game's not going to be played this week. So I think the fair thing to do, as a, even as a Solanke owner, is just complete wipe. Bring in, bring in your bench. Same question mm. to you. I think um, it really like the debate that's been going online, right? Really depends on people's own circumstances, right? So obviously, Solanke owned. Like non owners are like, hey, that's unfair. Like the game wasn't completed. Let's, let's wipe it off. And also, I think people, like, there's a fair amount of engaged players. You've got the shells and Gordon is their first person on the bench who'd come in. They're like, yeah, wipe it off. The game hasn't been completed. And then there's people like, well, you, you're in a bad, bad situation, right? Because you brought in Solanke for a hit, right? Yeah. 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 So, like, like you, and he would pay me with his goal. goal. <laughs> You're, you're being mature of your, your reaction. I mean, for me, it, yeah, it really is uh, unprecedented. So I think, you know, what... It's really tough, isn't it? Because it's not a game that's been cancelled. The game is played and there's been outputs that, that, that have happened, right? So um, what I think will happen is I think Solanke's points will stay as is because obviously FPL are trying to come up with a solution to scrap those points. But I think it feels like their, their solution is quite automated that it's like um bonus added manually but everything else gets like an automatic feed from octo or whatnot so they're trying to get rid of those points i think just remember back to those covid times where they couldn't stop it the game played it was yeah like game week wasn't it like game week 40 or something like that because there's all these game weeks in between where the game continued yeah. i think i don't think they'll be able to change the code in time to get rid of those points right which i think it's like If you're not on the the receive, if you're not receiving the positive side of that, if you don't own Solanke, like I think you can live with that because he has played. They have played sixty eight yeah. minutes. And he has scored. It's not like a random occurrence. Yeah. And like there'll be a double game week in game week where thirty two or whatnot, and you'll bring, everyone will bring in Solanke anyway, right? So you yeah. can't feel too hard done by as a mono. Yeah, yeah. I think. I mean, that, I think that's less of a situation that's annoying versus like people like you brought some him in, him in, he's performed in that game. And you're down loads of points, right? I think it's um, psychologically. I think people can be more accepting if, like, yeah, they just keep those six points. But we'll, we'll, we'll see. It's, it's not going to. It's not going to change the change the world. But I think uh, that's that's another one yeah. that you can tick 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 add to that box of. Uh, I was a bit unfortunate in that circumstance where you made the right decision, but you can't predict things like that. Like obviously, you can't you can't predict what happened and happened to um, Lockyer. I mean, I think it was that I think he um, had it in May of last year, right in the playoff final. I think he, um, yeah, playoff he passed out. So um, yeah, hopefully he's all right. But like, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Now. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll see soon. Soon enough, I think they'll have to lock it in ahead of deadline. So we'll see. Yeah. I mean, um, as a Solanke owner and a cash first bencher, of course, I want Solanke's points to remain, which I think will probably what ha- will be happen unless they change the structure of how the game works but um we shall see we shall see yeah 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 that's uh time will tell thursday is the deadline mm. right so find out find out in the next couple of days a couple of talking points we don't need to speak about them all just some th- things that came to mind which was captain blanks i think mm-hmm. as non-son owners when son blanked in the first game of the game week we thought happy days here comes yeah. 
here comes Salah to, to punish all those sun captainers. And Salah did get an extra point. So it was the right decision out of the two. Um, so obviously took a book in to, to go down to two points. Um, but yeah, did you, did you, out of interest, I've, I put second there is Palmer and Moss. Did you ever toy with making Palmer your captain? No, I think I think I, I, I'll be controversial. I know it's a talking point, but captain blanks this week makes it don't matter, right? Because Harlem was out, right? And then anyone yeah. who's remotely engaged to your real competition. I know we got people in some of our mini leagues who are less engaged and they'll go random, right? But like after by the end of the season, right? You compete with people who make the logical decisions. Anyone who's making a logical decision will be captain Salah, right? So it don't really make much of a point. It's a bit a bit of a moot point, but I think. Um, Salah was unlucky, right? His expected goal involvement, including according to the FPL site, was 0.75. That's good. That's good, right? So I think, you know, most yeah. of the time you get an attack and return from that. And I think Liverpool, they were the attacking force. They were a little bit unlucky. I think probably like a 1-0 would have been a fair result in that game. So he was a little bit um, unlucky. Um, Son, you mentioned Son. I don't think many people would have genuinely gone... Son over Salah if they own Salah and, and they know what they're doing. But um, yeah, Son was unlucky as well. Right? Son had expected goal yeah. involvement of like 0. 0.65, I think, off the top of my head. Don't quote me exact, but normally, because the way Son operates, if he gets that, he normally gets a goal, right? So um, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think um, it's a shame that Salah blank, blanks, but I think it don't really make a m- massive difference this this week because everyone who is engaged would have would have captained him. Um, but did I toy with Palmer as a captain? Absolutely not. <laughs> no, no, not. no. Just not because of the fixture. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I just thought because he's in theory he's at home to the potentially the weakest club in the league. Uh, whether it was a was it a thought, but something on Son, you know, an interesting thing with Son is he's now moved for the last two games back out to the left wing with Richarlison coming in down the centre. Now we spoke mm. earlier on, yeah. in the season about how. Son from the left wing just isn't the same player as he is through the middle. Mm. Is, it, is that concerning? Yeah, I appreciate you're, you're going to have to sell someone who goes off to the, the Asian Cup um, anyway, but might you move him on earlier because of his, his change of position? No, well, obviously not. Yeah, you, you're not moving Son earlier. Right? The fixtures are okay, so you're not moving him on. Um, it's more choice of where, whether he's, he's a captaincy option in certain weeks. Like So next week, he's a captaincy option, hoping to Everton, where I think it'll be Son or... Watkins or Son Watkins or salary will be the toss up between the three, right? Um, I think I heard something again, don't quote me on it, but I think I, I kind of like saw that Son hasn't scored from open play in set or got a re- attack and return in open play for seven game weeks. Wow, that, that's a lot, isn't it? Yeah. But he does have set pieces, he does have yeah, set he pieces, does. he, he does. has pen- penalties now, and I think. Until the Asian Cup, they're going to flog him, right? So it seems like he's got over his fitness problems he had earlier in the season, right? So he's been playing 90 yeah. minutes. So, like, we know a lot of penalties come late in the game because of game state. So he's not a sell. But I think there's enough of a question, just generally, like, is he a captaincy option? He, he's very streaky. He's a very streaky player. It's hard. Yeah. I, w- I would take over a player who gets nine game nine points every week over Son, who's like, he blanks and then he gets a... 15.24. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, 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 I yeah, take yeah. over that consistency over a song so it, because it makes it makes captaincy a lot more difficult to predict. But, um, yeah, I don't, I, I won't regret bringing him in. Uh, a lot of good managers brought him in. I, I mean, I would have never brought him out to be honest, but, um, uh, yeah, I'm more concerned. I, like his stats have been good. The, the thing is, like when he was left wing early in the season, his underlying stats were crap, right? His underlying stats the last two game weeks have been good, right? So yeah. I don't, I don't even kind of compare and contrast it. If his, if he did had, if he had no underlying threat, then it'd be considered, it'd be a concern. His underlying threat has been good for him this this, this season. But um, yeah, Palmer, uh, Palmer is he? Didn't consider him as a captaincy or option. Uh, I don't know whether there is definitely a bias in there towards like cheap players. There's a bias towards them, and like I mean, Palmer yeah. really is a 8.5 midfielder, isn't he? He's a penalty taker for Chelsea. who's nailed on, super attacking. His expected goal involvement is 0.75. He's he's a he's Bruno Fernandez. Right? Yeah, a five point uh, so five, five million. Bias. Yeah, so I think there's definitely bias that happens every year with the price points of players, which is really interesting. I mean, an interesting question is, 
if, 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 if Bruno Fernandes was playing Sheffield United at home, would you consider him as captaincy option? Probably, right? So there's definitely these, these biases coming in. Um, is he a must, though? I think so. For his price point, there's there's some of these players that are just gifts. De Bravka is a gift, right? When we brought him in, and he's done all right since then. But Palmer is a gift. Like, what is he now? What, is he six now? Must be. I don't even know. Five point five point six, maybe. I'll have a look. Yeah. Well, he's a gift. He, 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 he's a gift, right? He's 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 the concern was he was too dependent on penalties. He was a pen merchant, but he's had great goal involvement scoring assisting outside of pens as well he's like he's probably yeah he's with umbuma being out he's the best value asset in the game right with the fixture run as well so yeah is he a must yeah of course of course yeah he's uh he's 5.6 yeah wow like yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's gonna be eight million next year so make the most of it yeah 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 absolutely uh nunez we spoke on him briefly. Instant uh, sell. Got uh, Arsenal next. So I really like him as a player. I, I like to think I like him as a man. I don't. I don't know him, but I think I'd get on. I think. Uh, yeah. Seems a like man. a nice guy, right? Maverick, Captain like, Chaos. Like, who would you take to whistle binkies? Like our uh, <laughs> our desired sponsor. He'd podcast, love it. He'd love it. In whistle binkies. Uh, exactly like um i think i like him as a guy as, as well as a player but um but he's been a real display and i was like really pushing for him right because i brought him on wild card and like i made that bet because he had good underlying stats and great fixtures he's been a massive disappointment and i think the last four or five game weeks his his chaotic but wonderful underlying stats they've dropped off right so uh he's always had an issue with converting his chance and stuff like that but like he's just not getting as many chances now right but i don't know whether that's confidence or, or what but it's underlying stats they're still very good but not they're not as great as they were so yeah i've got to admit the feet i think it was a worthwhile bet and i was betting on his minutes when yeah, i yeah. brought him in um i mean for you it's, for, for you it's tougher right because you obviously brought him in quite recently so at least i got a few attacking returns from him but um yeah, you were a bit of a bit of a mistake. So is Nunez an instant sell? No, because I think every other team, every team has got so many problems. And who are the other outside of Solanke and Watkins? Who are your forward options? Alvarez and right. Hartland, right? And they're not they're blanking next game week. So he's not an instant sell. You you sit on him, you hope that he plays next game week, which I think he probably will. He's getting minutes still. And like I think you need someone like Darwin against Arsenal. He's the only way that Liverpool are going to get a return. Let's be honest. I'm, I'm sorry, but like, is is Star Wars? What are you on about? No, but like, I think it's intertwined, right? Like, they they do create chances yeah. for them, themselves. Like, Salah's just going to get marked out of the game, right? If you've got Gap playing as the as the ten or the nine, like as the cent the cent the focal point of the attack, like um, it's not going to work. So I reckon I reckon he's good for sixty five minutes before Josh becomes comes on or gap code comes on so uh you got to keep him but um yeah for me um he's my exit strategy for, for Haaland. i think it's probably the same for you which is which yeah. is fine um i think the thing that you're keeping the back in mind is that um obviously sal is going to act on game week 21 to 23 at, at least that means nunez is yeah. probably a lot more mailed because i think that means jota probably has to play on um on Salah's side yeah, um, unless Elliot plays there, but I don't think he's going to start. Like you, you can have Jot. Front three will be Diaz, Jota, and uh, Nunes. You, you, you'd think. And Nunes could be on pens, right? Because he has a really good record for Uruguay and other teams. So I think he's has... yeah. hundred percent um, conversion chance. He so, takes them. But, so easy. Yeah. But um, yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a sell. He, he's the Harlan next. If you got him, and you got Slank and Watkins, he's a, he's your uh, you're out to Har Harlem, but like you can't sell him instantly because they're the other op the best options are a blanking, right? So uh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm, he's an unfortunate hold for the for the time being. Um yeah. is it I'm mean, kind on. of in a lucky position. When yeah, if I sell him and he starts banging as a Liverpool fan, I'm gonna be like, well, it's a shame I'll get the fantasy points, but you know, he's scoring. So I'll be okay with it. 
Um, and then I've, I've made a note, so two notes. One, West Ham kept a clean sheet. I've got to, I've got to call it out because I kept slagging them and Villa off for their lack of clean sheets. They finally, they finally got one, uh, which was, which was cool. Now Wolves did score, but it was just offside, so, so they kind of got away with one. But hey, yeah. clean sheet in the bag. Um, and then I put as well, Matty Cash got a start finally. So he'd, he'd obviously been dropped for a few games, but obviously Digne was was banned. For because he he had five bookings, so do, do you think that's the only reason Cash rarely got a start? Do you, I suppose the question I've got for you, Matt, do you think Cash will start against Sheffield United? No, no. Like I, he he's there. I'm I'm really kicking myself as well because I was one you up early in the season, say it was injuries that was meaning that he was playing. And I really believed that. I knew that was true, right? Yeah, yeah. I knew it was like the likes of Moreno and. I think Conso was out maybe earlier in the season as well for for a period of time. I knew it was like injuries meant he was playing. And also the game where he got his haul in, he was playing as a right winger where I think, um, who was, well, one of their attackers, I don't think it was Diaby, who's Bailey. Bailey was, um, Bailey, Bailey, Bailey was injured and out of favor. Right. So Cash got his hauls when he was playing the right winger. Right. So I knew it wasn't sustainable. And I, Kick myself because I'll cash in on, on wildcard and I got rid of Paul Torres, who's got a good attacking threat for a central defender because he yeah. pings the ball for assists, but he's also threatening at set pieces. He's a great defender. I got rid of Paul Torres instead of cash. And like, since I've done that, cash has been dropped. So, like, yeah, kicking myself on that. And Paul Torres, a lot of people like, um, will be bringing in this week, right? I think, yeah, obviously the Sheffield United at home. Yeah. We'll see if he's fit. I think he went off with a, a niggle, but it looks like a niggle rather than a proper injury. But um, yeah, Cash, um, yeah, he's not going to play against Sheffield United. I think either it'll be Bailey, Di- Diaby, or yeah, Luca Dean will, will, will kind of play instead of Cash. And I'm kicking myself because I knew it. What you got to do with this, with, with listening to watching, watching or listen to this, we're, we're good at player ID. We just get the timings wrong. So just like. Don't listen when we so bring in. Whatever we say, bring in or take yeah. to get rid of players. But just listen to the players we mention. We we're right at the talent ID, I think. And then wait four weeks and then do it. <laughs> so I say, just get us the head. Havertz as well. Havertz is doing so well. Like Havertz? now, yeah, seems to be seems to be the main man at Arsenal again. But we'll we'll look at the fixtures. So we're we'll start with the defence. Touching on on Matty Cash now. Interestingly, Villa are top. Um, primarily because they've got you know Sheffield United at home, Burnley at home, and then got Sheffield yeah, United yeah. again in the next six because of the way the fixtures are running. Uh, so you're expecting probably one, two, maybe even three clean sheets mm-hmm. showing that run. Obviously, the second, third in the table, joint points with Liverpool are doing the, the, the playing brilliantly, and at home they seem to keep clean sheets pr- pretty comfortably against big teams. So that 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 home game against Newcastle will have just be City one 0 will just be Arsenal one 0 so there's no reason that they can't beat Newcastle one nil. Um, so if you are selling cash, and I appreciate you've got him, but he's, I appreciate it's, it's probably not top of your though. agenda. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if you beat City and Arsenal one nil, why not Newcastle, right? But, so they um, were lucky against Ars- they were lucky against Arsenal. The City they dominate that. Arsenal they were lucky. So that's a that's yeah. a bold statement. But um, yeah. Anyway, but, sorry. If, you, well, that was, that if was you're bold. selling, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to stick with it. I'll, you know, I'll get the two fans to write in and complain. Um, three nil, new, three three nil to Villa that game. Uh, okay, so if you're selling cash, you know, looking at the fit this fixture ticker, are you target Villa? You're just going straight cash to Torres or or to Conte, um, whoever. Or are you looking at one of the other teams? Well, cash it, cash it, get rid of cash for sure, right? Um, Villa are obviously top because they got that. You know, in the next six game weeks, they're playing Sheffield United twice. Yeah. And Burnley, right? So they got those those right fixtures and they got they got some tough tough ones around. So I think this is when you like really look at your your rotation of your defenders, right? When you'll play your defenders, when you'll bench then and see if it's like optimal for you. So yeah, I, I like I think the um the pick of the villa defense, I think, is Conser and, and Pau Torres. Pau Torres top. Let's see if he is fit. He had a niggle the weekend, but Pal Torres is the best because of his attacking threat. It's not just like, as I said, I'm repeating myself, but it's not just the corners he's threatening. He pings the ball from deep, so like breakaway goals for the likes of Bailey and Diaby 
and Watkins. He's the one pinging it over the top. So, um, and we know Villa like to play in that way. So I think Pau Torres and I feel stupid. I brought him in and, and I got an attacking return from him, got rid of him. I feel stupid. But Pau Torres is uh, is the best bet for that Villa defense. So I like it. But then next best defense is Fulham, Bright, and they're shit at defending, right? So you're not, I'm not, I'm not looking at them at all. Chelsea are a mixed name. So they've got some decent fixtures coming up. I, I don't know. Yeah, I think I don't know who would you go from Chelsea. I, I'd probably go go Colwell. He's the pick for Colwell, me. Colwell, yeah. yeah, just for price and with injuries, he he seems to be set to to start. Yeah, uh, Colwell is a good bet. West Ham, I won't go near. Luton won't go near. Spurs, obviously, there's some nice. Mm, I don't know mixed home mixed fixtures, right? So you got Everton at home, which I think is not as good as this ticker suggests. Yeah. Brighton is a tough game. As you said, they've scored in 30 consecutive games until Arsenal defence held them. There's Bournemouth, which is good. Brentford is probably an okay game now, but I, th- th- those are mixed, right? So, obviously, yeah. Pedro Porro is, is the pick of it, but you're treating him as a midfielder, right? Any, any clean yeah. sheet is a bonus there. Newcastle have a really tough run game week 20 to 22, so let's see how you can rotate your team around, right? Because game week 18, 19... And 23, really nice, right? And Newcastle, they are they are an elite defence, right? So Trippier, Burn, Burn could be a gift, right? 4.4, right? And he was he was top of all players, I think, for expected goal involvement. So um, yeah, some nice teams there, like Newcastle, Spurs, and Spurs, Villa, Letterx, and Chelsea, all teams we can pick defenders from. Good value defenders, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So cash out for one of the, one of those. I'm uh I'm, I'm tempted by Dan Burn, 4.4, as you say, but with, with Lachelles and Dubravka, I think the triple the triple up on the Chelsea defence when with with those uh, the Newcastle defence, even with Liverpool, City, and Villa in a, in, a, in three games in a row, not so much. Mm. Well, it depends on you, it depends on, on your rotation options, right? So you could you could play one of them, yeah. But, like, you don't want to play all of them, right? So it depends on yeah, what one of those. Got. Yeah, you're Taylor, and you? Who are Taylor. Playing, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> so, 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 so that's pretty much game over. Um, but the attacking, the attacking returns. So Villa are on top of that as well. Again, mainly because of those fixtures to Burnley, Sheffield United twice. Uh, Newcastle are up there as well with their with their attack, and Man United are on there. Just in case you're mm-hmm. interested in going to United for for any particular reason, um, and then Chelsea are on there as well, but. Other than Watkins, anybody that interests you at Villa? Um, not really. It's tough, isn't it? Because the Abbey and Bailey are in and out. The name they're they're in and out, and um, the rest of the team they're just a bit too deep. Yeah, McGinn is too deep, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah. Who's their penalty taker? What's his name? Um, Douglas Louise. Douglas Louise. Mm. It's that ain't the worst, but like you're really banking on the penalty, right? Like he's he's a deep line playmate maker, right? So it's it's kind of really Watkins or bust, really. But if you don't have Watkins, make a make a move to bring him back. Why why do you not have Watkins? That's yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, what Watkins is is a must. Um Brighton aren't really good. Brighton were next on the ticket. They got a nice little run of attack and fixtures next six. Um it's just like Matoma's had a real drop off, right? So it's it's kind of who massive. who can you trust? It's, yeah, yeah. He's had a he's had a massive drop, and he's a, he'll go away as well in game week twenty one. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, and I think Japan are the favourites, aren't they, for the Asian Cup? So he'll be he could be staying longer as well. So it's the same. Uh, it's a shame. Um, Solly March isn't yeah. fit, but um, yeah, Brighton yeah. because of the rotation risks, they're a bit of a write off. Newcastle. I think I think Gordon's the man, isn't he? Barnes, I think, had a yeah. well that, we know well as a as a, as a Gordon, Gordon owner and you know somebody got rid of him for home fixtures. I know he's great for home fixtures and um he's got Luton and Forest in the next six, which are great as well as Man City. Um and I think Gordon Gordon's the Gordon's the man there. I mean Isaac and Wilson, it's a bit up in the air, right? So yeah, it's too Gordon much or swapping. Yeah, it's Gordon, yeah, Gordon yeah. Luton, you ain't going there. West Ham, I think, um, 
Bowen, who scored this weekend, is a tremendous option still. Um, I kind of wish I did yeah. go for him as my um, um, Boomer replacement rather than Gordon. So, uh, yeah, Bowen is like a player I'm looking on with quite a lot of envy with players, people have got him. So, uh, he'll be, he'll come really, he'll be really popular game week 21, right? Everyone knows that. Yeah, because, absolutely. Yeah. Salah and Son are out, right? You either yeah. move in both of them or at least one of them to like go it and like, Look, he's playing Sheffield United away, Bournemouth at home, and then Man United away. I think that was a good little run for attacking fixtures. So I think Bowen, given a lot of people own Saka anyway, I don't, so it'll be a decision, decision. but Bowen will be, you'll have high ownership. Um, you may want to play, I, I have thought the, the Spurs and Liverpool fixtures in game week 20, but you may want to get ahead, ahead of the curve. Brighton at home is a great fixture, attacking fixture, right? So um, Bowen... Yeah, a lot, a lot of love for for for, for Bowen. Um, United and Palace fixtures. I don't think there's not enough there to go Bruno Fernandez or Palace is interesting because like Eze is back now, but like Elise took yeah. a penalty when Eze was on the pitch. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But those, those two are, are great threats. So Elise and Eze are both awesome um, players, but um, there's not enough there to really go hard. Bournemouth, you can be happy with Solanke, even if you get unlucky. Right, I think Solanke is a good medium to term hold and like Chelsea and Fulham bring bring that like top attacking fixtures like to a conclusion. So I think um yeah Palmer is is a good 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 little pick pick and eat but like no one else. So I think for me I'm feeling quite assured that a lot of my squad uh represented here. Um I feel yeah. Owen is the is the man to target but I'll be game week twenty if I'm being yeah Game twenty, I'm probably using that fix, that that to bring in Hartland. Let's be honest, but like, um, yeah, game week twenty one, Bowen is on on my radar for sure. I mean, um, who are you? Anyone who stands out out those teams and players? Um, I'm hoping you're pouring wine there and not doing anything else, just to um, <laughs> just to just to cl- clear that up. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, Bowen, I'd love Bowen. I'd, I'm a big fan. You know, even mm. United at home. Get quite can quite easily score away at Arsenal a bit tougher, but then yeah, Brighton, Sheffield United, Bournemouth, uh, yeah, yeah, he can he can very much go on a, and and score in, in pretty much every single one of those games. He's playing up front as a midfielder, so I do want to find a way to him. My only way to him at the minute is probably selling Saka, but yeah, like the rest of the game, game week twenty one, I've got to fill a son and Salah hole, so he he fills it very nicely, so. I'll probably do that. Otherwise, yeah, Solanke got on him, but Palmer got him. Uh, I don't have a Newcastle attacker. I'm not. I'm not overly concerned, if I'm honest, about no, Gordon. I, agree. I know he's. he's I agree. Yeah, he's not. You know, I know he's getting an, an assist or a goal pretty much every other game, but I'm not overly bothered. I'm mainly looking at Liverpool City Villa in 2021-22. And I'm, I'll, I'll just deal with not having them for the for the looting away is not easy. Looting away, they haven't lost by more than one goal at home uh, all season. That's not an easy fixture. Forest at home, he could do very well in, but that's only one fixture in the next five. So I'm not panicking. So um, no, I, I um, no, I, I agree. There's a good place to be because this shows that we've done some good plan, long term planning, where we're saying the teams were good fixtures, medium term. We're well represented, and that's what we should be saying yeah. all the time. If you're something yeah. like shit, I'm not. I've got none of these players with these good teams with good fixtures. You've done something wrong. But you got yeah. Watkins. I've got Gordon. Yeah. We don't have Bowen. Yeah. There's a bit of a gap. We've got Solanke. We've got Palmer. So we're well well represented from the best teams. Yeah. That are good. The good teams. They're good fixtures. We're well represented, but um. Yeah, Bowen is the gap, but there's a real easy exit point that we both know, which is game week 21. But, yeah. yeah, we're going to need exactly. a replacement for Son and Salah, like either or, or, or maybe both of them. So, like, yeah, it's convenient yeah. there. But, um, yeah, but Bowen is someone I know we both like a lot. I think, um, outside FPL, I yeah. think, um, I reckon he, he reminds me of Salah a bit, the way his playing style. I reckon he'll be the Salah yeah. replacement for Liverpool, just because, like, he's efficient. And threatening, he's not got a good highlights yeah. reel. Well, Salah does have a great highlights reel, but like his his playing style is probably one of the closest to um to Salah. And um, yeah, I can that? see it. You no, know, I think it's um 
what's it I ref is that like stats website and you can just, like it, it like works out on different stats where a place um kind of like compares to their peer group are they like the 99th percent court out are you like best in the world or are they you know, mid or they you know, somewhere in between yeah i bet if you run that i reckon bowen's playing style would be very similar to salas because you can run that into like similar players i reckon he'll be quite close so I reckon, yeah um, right. he's probably the closest you can i'll be get disappointed hmm. yeah he's probably if the closest he, he a player who plays like salah right so um yeah yeah I mean, very good player. I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be opposed yeah, if sal wants to go and, and does go well i'd be disappointed if bowen was who we got in um at all be fairly happy with that one um been talking a lot about defenders Okay. Mainly because I think a lot of people need to sort out defence issues this week. Um, Haaland's obviously a big hole if you haven't sold him yet because he blanks, but I th- most most people are going to have to play at least four defenders this week because of the, the, mm-hmm. those blanks. Um, and you're kind of looking at most people having a Charlie Taylor or somebody on the bench that they don't really probably want to play, so they want to make that, that fourth defender the most efficient. Yeah. Well, this is the data since game week 12. Shows how much Pedro Porro has been pushing forward. You know, for a defender, 14 shots in his last six games and 18 attempted assists. So over two shots a game and three attempted assists for a defender mm. is yeah. phenomenal. So he, he seems, if you can get to him, he's up to 5.5 million, so he's a, he's a fairly expensive. But then if you look just under him, Senesi. Now we were just looking at the, the, the ticker. Bournemouth are on there. This guy is is from predicted point point of view over the last six game weeks is third. Caveat: he's had three shots and two of them have gone in. So, where do you stand with with these? Is that a flash in the pan? That's not going to last. None. What What are you thinking? Um, I think it'd be Sinesi will be interesting from a rotation option. Do you know what I mean? Like you don't want to you don't want to be having the bank on him as your third defender every single. In week, right? But like, yeah. If, 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 yeah, you can rotate him in nice with your other options. I think he could become an option. He has a lot good from an attacking point of view and has a great price point. I mean, like the guys that stand out there for me, are like, you know, the Arsenal defenders, of course. So you, your four, your table here is like the expected FPL points according to fix since game week twelve. Yeah. So what's that? The last five game weeks, yeah. Um, Saliba, Zinchenko, Gabriel, are all pretty pretty looking pretty good right and um yeah Saliba and Gabriel are pretty behind the the, the points right there yeah six points up yeah five and six points respectively so and that's testament to the Arsenal defense right because they just do not concede many chances right so I think your foundation of a defense it needs it needs at least one Arsenal defender for sure um yeah I see Trent as top by some margin. Yeah. He's outperformed his expected points, but yeah, well, fifty-three by some margin actually, it's fifty-three points against forty-two. I think this, this will be interesting because like Liverpool had a really nice run of fixtures, which is why I'm tripled up on them. You are triple? Are you tripled up on them? Doubled? Am I? I might only have Salah. No, we're both doubled up. Oh, we? Salomon Nunes. Salomon Nunes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously yeah. Nunes. Yeah. I, ju- I just forget I've got him because he's been shit. So I just don't. I just don't pay any attention to him. So oh, yeah, I'm yeah, I've got Simicast. You you don't have Simicast, do you? Um, no. So I'm triple up because Liverpool had like medium term since game week eight, nine, ten. They had the best like medium run of fixtures. So obviously this is looking back in time. So Trent is Trent and. Van Dyke is the bottom, so let's not take too much of account to him. But like Trent has managed to optimize his really good run of fixtures. Going forward, it's a it's mixed, right? It's not not the best run of fixtures. But I think some people will make the mistake that they'll have a lot of money in the bank, right? People have sold Harlem, they've got yeah. 10 million in the bank. I have got nine million, you probably got the same right in your bank. Some people be like, I need to buy the most expensive assets, and people will bring in Trent, expecting these levels of returns when he has tougher fixtures. And then you know what happened. They need to bring it back in Harlem. They'll be like, "What do I do?" Right. So, um, yeah, Trent. Um, Trent doesn't doesn't appeal. I mean, Pedro Porro um, does for sure. So 
he's underperformed his stats, right? So 28 points yeah. over the last, you know, since game week 12, but his expected points 35. So that's that's great. And like, yeah, his attacking stats, you've highlighted them before. They're great from an attacking point of view. I, I would say that the caveat is, is Spurs' defence is average at best, right? So he got eight points the last game week. He got the clean sheet and two point bonus. He was lucky. I don't know if you saw highlights or I saw highlights, didn't see, see the game itself, but there was like two or three goal line clearances from Spurs and their expected goals conceded was like two. So they got lucky. So I think with Pedro Porro, you got to make make your bet that you're going to get a random clean sheet, but really it's the attacking returns that you're going. But yeah, he's a great, great option. But like, yeah, Pedro Porro is the guy that stands out. Outside the Arsenal defence, Pedro Porro is the one that stands out for me, I think. Um, also, the, the yeah. lack of Newcastle defenders stands out, but I understand why they're not here. They've had tough fixtures and they've had a few oh, free game weeks, right? So I think their defence yeah. will start looking a lot better soon. So Trippier, who would always be on this table, isn't here. He's missed a game. And also, yeah. partly because of him, <laughs> their defence is like expected, expected goals conceded has been quite high recently. But I think the um, Newcastle defence, I still think it's elite over the long term. So... Yeah, Trippy is a consideration, burn is a consideration. They're not on, on it. But we say that every week is this is retrospective, isn't it? So um so, but if we're looking forward, well Trippy is second. Hmm. So yeah, he's expected points coming forward. So he served that ban. So that's not hanging over him anymore. Uh yeah, expected to be second behind Trent, which I think pretty much every time you bring this table up, they're one yeah. and two. Yeah. yeah. Paul Torres. Up to third. You know, you mentioned about him. Uh, three Villa players are on this list. So you've got Torres, you've got Digne, you've also got uh, Conza, ninth on the table, mm. just to show the strength of this this six, this six next six weeks that they've got. Um, yeah. yeah, so I mean, is it worth a double up? What, for what, a double Villa? Double Villa? No. I don't think so. Like, uh, bear in mind, like the transfer is going to be a real premium, like right. So a lot of people, yeah. if you're playing the game seriously, you don't have Harland, right? You want to bring him in at back game week twenty, right? So that's one yeah. transfer. Then you got Salah and Son. We're leaving for Afcon and Asian Cup, right? You want to get rid of them, so you don't want to be pissing about with your defender transfers, right? So you're not going to be able to bring in two two Villa defenders. But um, uh, what you can see here is how to get the move right. You have to plan your defender rotation right so the villa defenders are really highly rate because you can see well, if you're listening i'll describe it to you let's talk about power torres game week 18 ex- where they're playing sheffield united at home i think at home yeah yeah expected points 5.1 game week 20 where they're playing luton or Burn- burnley home right 4.8 expected points Game week 23, they're playing Sheffield United away, 4.5, right? So that's what... But then game week 19, game week 21, 22, their expected points is quite mid, right? It's quite average, right? So you want to be... If you want to optimise your team, you want to find a play a, a way where you can play those guys in 18, 20, and 23 and comfortably bench them, right? I mean, that, I think that's the yeah. play for the Hill defenders. Um, I've got to say, I keep looking at this, I'm thinking, why the hell did I get rid of Paul Torres? Rather than cash, <laughs> similar guys. What what an idiot! And I knew it as well. That, like I mean, some people troll me. I, I say you know, I've been unlucky this year, but some people do troll me saying it's your decisions, and I, they are right. They are right. I think that luck comes into decisions. Right. Getting rid of Torres over cash was a bad decision because I knew better. I knew Power Torres would just play every game. I knew Cash was going to get benched eventually. But like, yeah, yeah. Um, I think depending on your defender rotations, Power Torres is a really great option. I think Trippier is a really great option if you've got the cash. Of course he is. Look, again, it's all about rotation. Isn't it? So 18 and 19, 4.9 expected points, 5.4 expected points in game week 19. Game week 21, 6.1 points. He has the the the, yeah. the bad run of, what's he got? He's got is it Liverpool, City and Villa. Villa, yeah. Um, that's, that's, that's a tough run. Pedro Poro is quite consistent, right? So you don't have great, great fixtures. But he's got enough good stuff at Petro Porro. So I think I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, if you want a defender, it's those three, I think, for me. Trippier, Powell, Torres, yeah. and Petro Porro. Let's, let's, let's assume Trent is too expensive. And let's assume a lot of people have... Uh, 
football. I, mean, I think Trent is always going to be at the top of that just because of his like historical like stats. Like, I, yeah, I'm not blown yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's um, I mean, he, he broke all sorts of records from right back in terms of assists exactly. and expected goal involvement, you know. So, yeah, I'm 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 with you. I, I think I need to, like, I'm kind of looking at this, this, and I'm looking at game week, game week 18. I'm not, mm. you'll see my team shortly. I'm not overly happy with my, with my defense. Game week 19, I can probably get away with it because I've got, you know, the two Arsenal. Defenders seem to have a, a fairly decent fixture according to their predicted points, and I've also got Lachelle's, so I can I can get I can get through that fairly comfortably. Depending on the Shar injury, because Lachelle's could get dropped if if Botman's back, if Shar's injury mm-hmm. isn't really an injury, Lachelle's is a problem for me, so I need to I need to consider that as well. Uh, and then game week twenty, Newcastle get a tough fixture. That's when their tough fixture run comes in. Um, so yeah, I've got I've got some. I need to be careful. Cash needs to go, but it need, I need to be careful who it's for. Uh, and mm. Torres is probably winning at the minute purely because of his price. Yeah, I love Porro, but I can't. I don't think I can make the budget work. I think that's fair. It's all about budget here, right? And and kind of rotation. Yeah. But like the thing is, like with Trippier and um, Pedro Porro, you know, there's lots of routes to points. Yeah, yeah, like, that's it. Trippier dominates set pieces. He dominates chance creation. Pedro Porro, to a lesser extent, he's less like super attacking. He's playing as a winger. He's playing as an eight. Pau Torres, he gets good attacking stats for a centre back, but he's a centre back, right? So he needs those goals from set pieces and his his balls over the top, right? So with Pau Torres, you're really betting on gambling on the clean sheet, yeah. Which is a nice place to be, I don't think sometimes. No, it's not. And it's so not, which is, Villa what is not in the league defense. I know Villa, Villa are flavor of the month, they? Uh, we've said all year they've been, they're a really good team. We've been back yeah. then because they've had those high profile wins against City. And who do they beat? Arsenal? Arsenal. Yeah, Arsenal. Arsenal. Yeah, so yeah. Well, a bit, they beat the two best teams in the league. <laughs> so, yeah, fair play to them. But like, Evans are really hyped on them. They're not an elite defense still. They're a good defense. They're not an elite defense. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It went, it went many weeks without get, keeping a clean sheet. We exactly. spoke about they it week in, week out. Unlucky. They were unlucky, but yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Would you go Digne over, to, over Torres just because he's, he does take no. some set pieces? He obviously no, gets more no. attacking. No? I think, I think how Torres, Torres has a better attacking threat through set pieces and he's like over the top balls like the stats will say it. the stats will prove that as well. Like yeah. he's got a better attacking yeah. threat, and like he will play because he's their best defender by far. He will play every game. Yeah, yeah. Dean, Kevin look at Dean. Minutes. Does have the rotation risk with the likes of Cash? Yeah, yeah. I, I know he. I know he plays left back and Cash plays right back. But yeah, the, the setup is they'll have one attacking fullback, right? So you could play a centre back, a left, a left back, and then Cash plays a bit more attacking, right? So. Um, there's some there's some yeah. logic grams. <laughs> I'm saying they're competing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, um, you've given me lots to think about. The defense is what something I need to address, which we'll come on to. But just just to throw it in, just in, just predicted point wise, this is every player in the game over the next six weeks. Um, now I'd say caveats. Salah and Son have numbers in there for. 21, 22, and 23, which will likely be zero for them both. But Solanke is making the top 10, which is interesting. Um, obviously showing his his good form, is is getting into the stats. I don't think he's been there before. But on this list, any person, we've spoken about most of the players already, but anybody jump out at you? You know, Saka's still on there, for example. Obviously, we've spoke about his lack of attacking uh, stats. I think that's yeah, a story. Well- well, well, Harlem stands out, right? That he's the fourth best on the game week predicted points, eighteen to twenty-three, and like he's missing according yeah. to these stats. Well, these predictions, sorry, rather than stats, eighteen and ninety, he's missing two, two of the the six game weeks, and he's he's uh, he's like fourth best, right? So, plan your return strategy, and I, I I agree with this. I think he's missing eighteen. I think he's missing nineteen. 19, though, is, is even if he is fit, he's playing Everton away, right? Which is a tough fixture. Yeah. I, I, I put that in the top six 
top six toughest pitchers at the moment in the team, but in the league based on form. Then he's got the Sheffield United game in game week twenty, right? So you you, you want that kind of like strategy to kind of bring him back back in. So Harlan stands out just from that kind of point of view. I mean, you know, obviously we use a fix for this, so I kind of like rate their rate their stats and whatnot, but like in their predictions. But I always think they're quite heavy on Arsenal defense uh, attack. I don't think Sakwin or Odegaard are I'm not as high on them. Yeah. I would think Solanke ex, um, outsport, outscores them. I think Bowen would outscore them. So I'm quite surprised to see them still highly rate, rated. Not I bad. think they I think I can see from this this table there's probably a high emphasis on like historic returns from some of the players. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, I see that. Yeah. There's two two goalkeepers there, Mark Inez and Leno. I think I'm quite surprised seeing them. But yeah, Salah, Son, Watkins, Haaland, Trent. Probably Sakura I'd expect to see there as well. Slank, I'd expect to see them. I'm, I'm surprised not to see Bowen, given the fixtures yep. and the set pieces. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's no supply. Palmer as well, actually, Palmer. Palmer's very low yeah, yeah. on fix. Palmer's very low on fix. And... Um, one of the other elite some, eleven the managers he, he mentioned earlier, saying why is Palmer so like low ranked on the, the fixed expected status? And I think it's because historic precedent. He's got no history. Yeah. Right. So yeah, yeah. Palmer not being honest is a bit of a surprise as well. But I think it's got all, it's got all the the names you would expect, right? Yeah. 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 Just with a few missing. Um, well, the next one's about captain this week. We always look at the mm-hmm. captain option, and I think at the minute. I mean, things might change, but I think at the minute we are both on a different captain. And I can't remember the last time we both captained somebody different. Uh, I'm sure it's happened this this week, uh, this season even. Uh, but we're both on somebody different. So I am on Watkins, who is, is top, a home to Sheffield United. Again, that might change. You're, you're currently on Son, who is a home to Everton. Um, and then I'm, I'm Salah's obviously in the middle. I know Salah's Salah, but he's playing the toughest defence in the league. So I'm mm. quite surprised that to see him second. Uh, Douglas Louise in, in in fourth, probably for the penalties against Sheffield United, potentially. But yeah, who, who are you looking at? Who are you jumping on? I mean, Chambers at 5.7. Do you really think anybody's going to captain Chambers? Does he even play? Who does he even play for? Is it a sub for Villa? Germany? Yeah. I'm assuming it's Callum Chambers. Yeah. Um, who's yeah? Who's suspended or injured? Pau oh, Torres. <laughs> well, Pau Torres is there. He's got five point one expected points. So, well, yeah, um, I don't know. That's an over. So maybe that's meant to be. That's meant to be somebody else. But are you? Um, so you're on. You're on. Son presently. Yeah. Who? Who genius. is like? Yeah. yeah. Um. Why you're on? So what? What's put you're on Son? Yeah, well, well, firstly, I'm glad to see that it's like Watkins, Salah, Son in that order by some margin of like the top three, because that, that's who we were saying yeah. logically felt like the three-way split. I think with Salah, it's tough because Arsenal are really... Well, he's a way to Arsenal, isn't he? I think that's kind of yeah. one. Not really. I don't, Arsenal are Anfield. really... Oh, it's at Anfield, okay. Hmm, I it's think Anfield. it was more yeah. rough, didn't it? Arsenal are really are an def- elite defence. Yeah. But we know Liverpool can score goals in big fixtures, so it's, a, it's an interesting one. He's the most reliable option. He's got the most routes to a goal. Um, Watkins has the easiest fixture, but um, Villa do like playing against teams that come up against them. I think as as a, as a yeah. general a general statement, and like it, it's just difficult captaining someone who's not on set pieces. Yeah, yeah. No we know Douglas Louise. That's why he's he's fourth best option because he's on pens for Villa. Watkins isn't, so that's really quite fundamental for for, for me. Um, obviously, he's got the easiest fixture out of out of the the three, and then Swan has got a tough fixture home to Everton. But um, I think he does have more roots to a goal than Watkins, right? Because he's on, you know, he shares set pieces with Luzeski. He's on pens, so um. I'm going to have to look into it a little bit more. I have to look at how yeah, they yeah. perform weaker teams and teams that sit sit deep because of um, Sheffield United certainly will. So I have to look at the yeah. bat info. 
Because Watkins to me is like a stereotypical counter attacker, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Which you won't be able to do against Sheffield United. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, let, let, I'll run some data on Salah at home versus elite defences. So Man City can be the the baseline. And then Son, it's a bit of a hard one to predict, isn't it, really? Because like the Spurs team is so different. The Everton team is so different. So Son, I think, is just like a bit of a safe option. So, um, yeah, undecided yet. Yeah. That, that's probably one I'll probably think about in, in quite some detail. Yeah, I'm having a bit of a look. Just so Son, not Son, Watkins even. I am to Palace, got an assist. Hmm. Just like that, that seems that maybe it will have sat in. Luton, at home to Luton, no goals, no assists. At home to Fulham, he got a, managed a goal. Fulham is attacking, uh, though, and they are attacking. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, he had expected goals of one point nine one, so it's yeah. a hell of a return. Uh, a Forest who probably just sat. He only yeah. had expected goals of zero point three. So a Wolves zero point three. So yeah, he did. Do, you, what you're what you're saying checks out basically. I mean, so, yeah, this is just me spitballing. I need to check in the logic, but it's it's really tough. Yeah. That this yeah, week. Yeah. I think it's probably one of the toughest yeah. ones we've got this year, right? And and I think um, whoever does well this week and whoever does those do so well, it's probably going to be dictated by captaincy option, right? We all top yeah. up, top yeah. up, toss up because everyone everyone's going to have Watkins, Salah, and Son. So it's sure. whoever hits whoever hits lucky. Yeah. Uh, well, but I'm honest on you on Watkins, aren't you, for the time being? But like, um, that may that may yeah. change. Uh, I might just go Salah, just because you know, support my support my boy. Um, but well, bringing he's, he's in the best FPL player ever, right? So he's the best. Asset exactly, ever, the right? master. And, uh, and he and like, he scored against Arsenal plenty in the past. So, and he scored against great defensive loads of times, right? So, I mean. Ah, yes. It's definitely he scored. It's definitely one of those when where it's a great defense, a great attack against a elite defense, right? So, you know what gives, but yeah, and the, he's not against Man City defense. historically, right? When they've had the best defense in the league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's got it's got some some uh, some really good goals against them. He did, uh, did did have Manny and Firmino back him up, you know. So it was, there is that, but we ignore that. Don't worry about that. Don't worry. Oh, I just ignore that. Um, but we're bringing back questions for Matt. So yeah. it wasn't here last week. It is but back this week. We said it would be. So a couple of shout outs for the people that have submitted some questions. Um, we'll start off with at Harkin Boom. He is basically saying that the Arsenal Liverpool game is going to be 4 4. That's what he's that's what his message to me is to say. So he's he wants to know big on Nunes, big on Jesus, or is there another striker you'd rather target? I'd rather Watkins and Solanke next week. Yeah, and I think and I think it'll be a low-scoring game. Yeah, honestly. there you go. Harkin, suck that. <laughs> Your idea is gone. No, yeah. honestly, I know you mean. Arsenal defense is so good. Arsenal, the, Arsenal's yeah. defense is so good. Like that, I can't see two goals being scored by Liverpool. Yeah. Did you see two for Arsenal? I don't see. I was predicting. I say one-one, like so. Yeah, yeah. Um, if yeah, someone scores for Arsenal as well, it's not Jesus. It's gonna be. It's gonna be Havertz, isn't it? And that guy. Yeah, just to annoy you, <laughs> just to wind you. And then Havertz has got a few goals against Liverpool in his in his time as well. To be fair, but I think he scored twice for Chelsea against. So, one of those things. Um, but there you go, Harkins. Go Watkins and Solanke potentially if you if you don't have them. Uh, Cage Paps, aka Andy Pandy, has come back to us with a question. Been a few weeks, so nice to have you back, uh, Andy. And he said, "How do you deal with the season is over feeling?" I know we've both felt this uh, at different points mm. in the season. Andy's feeling it now. What can you say mm. to him to to get him out of it? No, it's, it's a really good question. Like I've I've had one good game week, right? But um, I'm still a really bad rank and. That's in absolute terms and relative terms, right? So uh, I think a lot of people are at bad ranks in absolute terms compared to where they historically are. But I'm in bad ranks relative to the people I'm going to be beating, right? So top, top managers. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of like looking pretty poor. I'm like 60, 70 points behind them. So um, that's going to be tough because these are good good people, right? You know what they're, they're doing just as much as I do. So... Um, how do I deal with the season is over feeling? I think um, 
I think I, I I always know one game we can make a big difference. So I've I've gone up eight hundred k in one game week. Right. Let's let's assume the game week like wraps up and Slanky's points are going to wrap up. I've gone up. There'll be all those subs, but yeah. 800 900 K I've gone up that in one game week, right? So one game week can make all the difference. And you can see that this people when some people say, ah, oh, game week eight, game week nine, wildcard, look at me advancing. You look at it, I've gone from a million to top 10 K. And really what made the difference is one game week, right? That big thing. So one game week, yeah. we can always make the a big difference. And we got our double game weeks, our blank game weeks where you can make all the difference, right? So one game week can make hell of a difference. And I've just seen historically as well, some people have said, I've seen people do this about other good managers, and I think it's been stupid, right? So I'm not going to go down this route. It's like, oh, I'm at a bad rank now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go for differentials or I'm going to have some fun. And what they do is just do yeah. random stuff. They take loads of hits. And then really if they kept on grinding sensible decisions week on week, they would have won some of their mini leagues, right? And they would have ended up with a respect respectable rank. Now, they weren't going to win FPL, but they could have finished top 10K, even top 25K, top 50K, by just grinding with good yeah. decisions, right? Um, I've seen some good managers, and they finished like a million rank, and that's because they just like start going random mode. So, yeah, I think there's two things there. Like one, yeah, one game week and a succession of one brilliant game weeks, so they can make all the difference. We've seen that already this year, and I'm sure there's people in everyone's mini week leagues, including, um, Andy Pandy's where they've made a, a difference. And like I think you there's still a lot of time for you just to grind. Yeah. I, I still think for me, I'm at a million rank. I still think top 50k is really achievable. Yeah. It's really achievable. Like like the best manager of all time, Fabio Borgiu, I'm like trying to like I try and wake myself against him. He's 30 points ahead of me. He's like 600 k rank. He'll finish top 10k, right? We're just grinding, right? Yeah. So um it's not over. Unless you start playing stupid. Yeah. When people start just being yeah. random, yeah. Like, oh take a punt on Havertz with minus eight. That's when you that's when it's like that's when the season's yeah. over, over. That's when you're like you're throwing it away. Yeah, yeah. That's not even halfway, yeah. God still still half the season to go, right? Mm -hmm. So plenty, plenty of points to play for. Um, hopefully that's helped you, Andy. And then last one, Kerry Irving, one of our longtime listeners. Hello, Kerry. Is he's got cash and simicast like you? Who is it better mm. to sell? Cash. Cash, cash, cash. cash. Re reason being is is like cash is dropped now, right? I know he had his random start, but that was because of like Luca Dean and um Bailey being out. Um, he was the weakest link by far. He, he ain't he ain't playing again. He's probably dropped. Simicast ain't dropped. He's doing well. Yeah. So we don't yeah. know when Robinson's back yet. So at the moment, there's a premium on people who are playing, right? Simicast is playing until Robinson's back. So cash is a problem Great. for today. Simicast is a problem for tomorrow. And, and Simicast ain't going to be losing money at the moment. Cash is just hemorrhaging money. Yeah, I felt that. I felt that, but I've had him since the off, so I'd say I'm not, I'm not, mm. I'm not lost money on him yet. And so I, mean, I, I feel, I feel I like it's coming four point nine, like or or even five, and it's like, why did I do that? Yeah, that was dumb. Yeah, he's painful, but yeah, play the play the minutes, right? Play the minutes. So, um, Simicast well, yeah, Simic right, Simic will play this weekend. He'll play next next weekend, and then we got yeah. the long jam break. But he's got he's got a few game weeks in him yet. I think cash. Yeah. I'm very confident he's missing. Unfortunately, I, I'm very confident yeah, he's going to miss that prime chef United fixture. I'm confident he's going to mix, miss the next couple as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. I think you're right. He's, no. he's, he's, he's pretty much my, my... If I don't roll, it's it's cash is going, unless some, some news comes mm -hmm. out. It's official. Um, Stamped. It's official. Cash, cash, mm -hmm. is, cash is going. Uh, but we'll move on to Matt versus Dave. I've absolutely scraped a victory this week. Uh, and I feel for you because you had Jesus who got nine, got a goal, three bonus. I had Richarlison who got nine, um, a goal and some bonus points. He got two. Kulosevsky got the three, but Richarlison got two to take him to nine. Um, Mike Buxley got one because he got a clean sheet, didn't he? But either way, they, they matched. So it was down to our Everton assets. And obviously, my striker did nothing, two points. Your midfielder 
didn't get a goal and assist, but Everton kept a clean sheet. But the Corre picked up a bit of a knock and went off a half time, so only ended up getting one point. Um, so DCL just playing over the 60 minutes got me through uh, 11 points against 10, takes me to 6 4. Um, yeah, hard lines though. I feel in any other normal game week, 2 0 Everton, Decor is getting three points minimum. So um, you, you've, you've been unlucky yeah, with that. Well, I thought I, I, I... I didn't realise he went off at half time, so I thought I beat you. I thought he had three points and he beat the DCL with two points. But um DCL. I think we're both unlucky, right? We we bet on Everton uh winning and winning decently. So uh yeah, you wouldn't would yeah. normally expect Everton to score two goals without an involvement for Duke, from Decorey and DCL, right? So Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, but double digits again for us both, which is good. Mm. So, so that's that's we're getting there. Um, so I get to go first because it's an even it's mm. an even week. So get, game week eighteen, and it's how much do I take? A, I'm going to go on. I'm going to guarantee myself a guy with some minutes. So he's going to play ninety. Reasonable fixture. He's returned in three of his last five games. He's owned by one percent of the, the people in the game. <laughs> it's a Wobi. <laughs> Ball of players. Never thought I'd bring a Wobi in for this, but I like. I'm going Maverick. I like the Fulham fixture. He's returned in three of his last five. Uh, I just, okay. you know, they've scored ten in the last three game weeks. I think they probably could have scored against Newcastle if Jimenez hadn't been sent off. Um, but they've got attack and returns a lot of them recently. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to go a Wobi as my as my first pick. I can see okay. from your face you weren't overly impressed with that one. No, no, no. I mean, um... yeah. <laughs> wasn't expecting that. Yeah. Wasn't expecting that. But um, no. I'll, I'll um, I'll go a little bit different, right? So um, minutes is probably going to be an issue here, but um, I like any team that are playing Brighton who are just conceding full stop. So I'm not. I could go Eze who got one minute, right? Yeah, I think I'll go Elise. Elise. He's got some. He's got some good online stats. I know. I know he took the penalty, but I reckon that's because he was on the on the pitch like the whole game, and then as it just came on, you can't take a penalty after just coming on as a sub. But um, as he has had two attacking returns in the last five, that's all right. His expected goal involvement against Man City was 0.88. He did have a penalty, of course, but like they've been different, decent. So yeah, I'll go. I'll go. Tempted with Eze, but I'll go with Elise. Yeah, it's Brighton. Okay. I mean, anyone for Eze is good two point eight attack against, against Brighton. Yeah, two point eight percent owned hmm. uh, for for Eze, which is pretty decent. Um, I think I'm going to go and I'm going to attack the Villa fixture. They're really good at home. They've got Sheffield United. I hear what you're saying about the the not so good against low blocks, but I feel I'm still going to go for that fixture. I'm kind of torn. It's it's play safe. I go Luca Dina because these they'll probably keep a clean sheet and yeah, go he, he will take some assists. Yeah, go for him. Yeah, trying to talk me into it. The other one's Bailey. I'm but just... again, he might not even start. But Bailey's Bailey's got seven returns in the last nine game weeks. Yeah. Or, he sorry, I'm gonna phrase that. That's my problem. That's my yeah. problem with I'll look at the predicted he is... points. Go, go back, go back a few screens. What who's the predicted points? Luca Dean there. Oh there. No, he's not there. It might have no, been in the defense not. ones. Yeah, he was in the defense ones, wasn't he? Oh, wrong one. There it is. 4.7. That's 4. nice. 7. That's nice. You're talking me into it. I feel like there's a there's a reason you're trying to talk me into him. But um I feel like clean sheets in the bag. So uh, I'm going to play boring, and, and I'm going to go. I'm going to go for him. Four point eight percent owned. Cool. I'll go Bailey. <laughs> the other one. The other one I was looking at. <laughs> Is it out of interest, I've had gone Bailey. Would you have gone Dean? No. <laughs> I'm, going to all the time. No, I'm going, going to attack us all the time. I would have probably targeted. Oh, it was a tough one then, that. Ah, uh, it's the, the fixtures are great, hence why we've got people like Alise and Awobi. Um, I like Kudos, you know, he's 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 in some good form. He's he must be like 
low ownership, isn't he? Surely over five percent. I might be wrong, but I think he's four point five percent. Yeah, I'll give him kudos. Yeah. Do you want to change? You can. No, nah, nah, nope. Bailey's so talking about him, isn't he? Bailey, Bailey will be starting that one because it's like all out attack, and he will, he will do well. Bailey's yeah, return. It's not it's not seven returns in the last nine. He has returned in seven games of the last nine. He might have had multiple in, in some yeah. of those games, but he's got attacking returns in seven of the last nine, which is pretty impressive. Um, so it's Elise and Bailey versus Awobi and Luca Dean. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm not feeling confident, but I've got to, I've got good. a two nil head start at the minute, so um, it is I can afford to lose one, right? So I mean, that is. I mean, look what's happened from last week. You had Calvert Lewin and Richardson, two centre forwards, good centre forwards, right? <laughs> yeah. To a defender and a wobi. <laughs> it's a move. It's a, it's a it's a it's a bold move, you know. But when when Dean gets two assists, I'll be I'll on a clean yeah. sheet. We'll we'll say no more. We'll say no more about it. Uh, <laughs> on to plans for game week eighteen. Uh, got my team up. Yeah, I'll, I'll run through it quickly for those of you that are listening, but. I'm playing a double Newcastle back line after their clean sheet recently. Uh, Dubravka in goal. Lachelle's is there. I'm partly concerned Lachelle's won't get a game, if I'm honest. Um, Botman obviously being back. And if that Shar injury isn't is isn't, just a knock, he might, he might not actually get on the pitch. Um, so that, that's a bit of a concern. And the, the thing that annoys me about that is if he doesn't start, I think he'll come on for Botman in like the 60, 70th minute. So that concerns me because they don't want to rush Botman back. So we'll we'll see where we're, where I lie with that. I've got Cash on the pitch at the minute, and I'm to Sheffield United. Obviously, we spoke in great detail about him and whether he's actually going to start. So so yeah, I don't think he'll be there. And then Saliba away at Liverpool. Not an easy fixture, but good defence. Across the middle, pretty much templates. Son at home to Everton. Saka away at Liverpool. Salah at home to Arsenal. Palmer away at Wolves. And then very template up top. Darwin at home to Villa, Solanke away at Forest, and then at the minute I've got Watkins with my armband uh, at home to Sheffield United. But yeah, my defence needs some work in my mind. You know, Cash isn't playing. Lachelle's is soon potentially going to get dropped and, and stop playing. Taylor's my my fifth option, and mm. I don't really want to play him any game week if I'm honest. So um, I've got one free yeah. transfer, six point eight million in the bank. Cash is the obvious move. Uh, I did toy with the idea when I put them putting them to Porro. Porro, obviously, with the attacking data, looks to be pretty much playing as as an attacking midfielder. So I'd like to get him. But if I get him, I'm then 0.4 million shy of taking Darwin to Haaland. So that is putting me right off it because I want Haaland back for game week 20 if he's fit. So my other choice is then to get another Villa defender from, uh, which would probably be Paul Torres. Seems the, the logical role. Or I sell Saliba for Porro. Depends how much I want Porro. Because Saliba's going to play 90 minutes. Cash isn't. Lachelle's isn't. So I think I need to deal with my, my expected minutes for my defenders before I start to sell somebody who is guaranteed 90 minutes in my defence. So I'm, I'm kind of pushing away towards that. So the, the likelihood is I'll sell Cash, I'll probably get Paul Torres, or I'll roll it. Um, but it'll probably be the first one. I'll keep an eye on the Lachelle's injury. Uh, sorry, the Shar injury, because it could mean Lachelle's does get to start. I'll I'll see what see what Eddie Howe says in in the presses later in the week. Um, what name's yeah. starting? Do what? You don't think Lachelle's is starting? No, Lachelle's will start. What name ain't starting? Come on. Well, yeah, I think I've got. I could get another week game week or two. I would. Yeah, exactly. I think I could get another game week or two. Uh, he um, has to go eventually soon. No, um, so yeah, I think he's well. Let's see what Sharp is, but I think he's good. He's good for the next game week. Botman ain't. Botman ain't start. I'm very confident Botman ain't starting next game week. I mean, look at your team, mate. Yeah. I would say Roll is a really appealing option. So let's bear in mind, you got to bring in Harland. Yeah, and then you got to get to get rid of Son and Salah. Right, so your transfers are at a premium. And like your defense is going to look better than a lot of teams because you've got Lachelle's there. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got two starters on your bench, right? So you've got 
Gabriel and Taylor that you, you might want to play instead of patching the end of the world. So I think any yeah. move you make for a defender, you just have to be very confident in it over the long term. You're going to keep this player. Otherwise, it's luxury. Because I reckon you can get away with rolling it. So I do I do want a Villa defender long term. I think their fixtures are quite nice. Oh, you ate it, def- uh, Villa Shame. defenders, until this game week. It's which, sorry? You hated the uh, Villa defenders, didn't you? I did. I did. Yeah. And, then they, and then they kept two clean sheets against the best two two of the best teams in the league. I was like, oh, actually, they're doing all right all of a sudden. Um, so a recent bias, right? But I do, Bad I do... FBL manager, management, that though, isn't it? Getting swayed by two fixtures and one was lucky. <laughs> I the, one was lucky. the recent data. But you've got to think they're keeping a clean sheet over you know, to Sheffield United. Uh, yeah. It depends what the odds are. But surely, surely. What do you the odds are or a clean sheet? 60 plus at home as well 70 we'll uh we'll see who does who does the odds is the bookies odds fpl talent he, he shares in every uh yeah game yeah. i i'm confident that they'll be about 40 percent 45 you reckon, is that it? but then that's what you're banking on isn't it it's, it's yeah am yeah. i confident that by flipping a flipping a coin more often than not it will, uh, you know, if I went ahead, it will go tails because, you know, less than a fifty percent chance of getting a clean sheet. I don't know. It's a tight, it's a tight one. I think um, probably for, uh, yeah, for, for you, if you want to get rid of cash, who is the obvious person to get rid of? It'd be Poro or Pal Torres. Agree, um, but a roll is a is a powerful option for you. Yeah. yeah. So I why would you want to get Saliba long term? You wouldn't want to get rid of him, right? So. I don't I don't I have still got some fixtures where I can I'm quite happy playing that Gabriel Saliba double. Game week nineteen yeah. looks quite nice for it. They're at home to West Ham. I think they'll be on they'll be on point. I can see them keeping it. I think that's sheet. why Poro Por- seems yeah. difficult for you. Yeah, it is. It's exactly the problem. I, I, I need, really I need to sell one of them. Yeah, it's it's probably Pau Torres or Roll, really. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always the case, but you don't have a wild card, right? So some people have got wild cards that they can play in the next like, yeah. two game weeks, which is a great luxury to have. You know you want to bring in Harlan for game week 20. That's a suit like we'll see what happens, yeah, right? Absolutely. It might be out long term, but you want to bring him back game week 20. That's that's either one move if you bring in Paul Torres, or it's two if you bring in Poro, right? So that's that's booking you transfers yeah, yeah. already. And you know then game week. 21, you want to be moving one or two of your players and redistributing those funds for a bit. So, yeah, I think when you think it through that, like it's like, um, and that, that's before injuries happen in your team, right? So, I think it, uh, you don't want to be blocking you yourself from moves. No, I don't, I, the power ones, the money, the money's put me off. I don't want to move, mm-hmm. as I said before, like the 90 minute guaranteed players, Saliba, Gabriel to a point. Taylor, they're, not a problem. You know, they're great, it's out. the best defense. Like, and when you think to yourself, when am I yeah. going to move? Do I want to be that's when I always have regrets is when I've done something stupid. Do I want to be removing a nailed on defender for 90 minutes? The best defense in the league yeah. by far, no, absolutely not. So, it's very that's much, a blue, yeah, until you have blanks and 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 like double game, which you want to keep that player, it's just like always there. Ask Saliba. It's not Gabriel Saliba in the team, but unfortunately he's the more expensive one you need yourself. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's where I'd need the money. But yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll probably, I'll probably do. I do. I know, I know the role's an option, but I will probably do cash to Torres just to get it oh, done because yeah. cash is cash. Cash is doing my head in sitting there. Yeah. I want, I want guaranteed minutes. I haven't got guaranteed minutes in cash, uh, and I feel like this week I need guaranteed minutes. So I'll you, probably, you let's put it this way: I'd rather play. Well, no, but I don't think Gabriel will keep a clean sheet either. I don't think Charlie Taylor will keep a clean sheet. I think they'll both concede. I, th- I would, I would, I imagine the odds of Torres getting a clean sheet is better than the odds of Gabriel getting a clean sheet. Of course, but by what extent is what you have to have to keep in mind? Yeah, I mean, I've got Saliba on the pitch, so if if Arsenal do keep a clean sheet, I get six of those points. 
I've got to back my boys, though, you know. I've got to think Liverpool are going to score. Um, although I would have said that before the United game and it didn't happen. So, um, <laughs> it's a misses. But, yeah, I just, I just, I don't, I don't want to go into that game with five players. That's, that's my thing. I don't want Gabriel coming on because then I've got five players in a game, which I think, like you, it's going to be low scoring, probably 1 1. Maybe somebody will nick it 2 1. I don't want five players in it. I'm, I'm unhappy having four players in it, if I'm honest. I just haven't got another choice. So, for that reason, I'll probably make the transfer. All right. Well, that's where you're. That's why you're here. Because you're here to go. That's just you're an idiot. But uh, no, 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 no. I, I think um, I think Paul Torres is probably the obvious thing. But it's not a one game week thing, right? It's like let's plan your no, rotations no, for the next no, six no. game weeks. And Paul Torres has ripe fixtures three of the next six. So you can bench him for the other ones. Yeah, and that's um, what I do. He, he seemed to have some nice swings with Lachelles or, or, or the Arsenal boys. So it was. It helps. Well, Rochelle so Matt because he's going to be benched. He? He's going to be benched sooner than yeah. later. But like, yeah. yeah. Arsenal, so he's, he's also a pre book transfer. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So that's that's my thoughts anyway. Um, well, yeah. I think that, I, I think that justifies your move as well because soon Lachelle is going to be a rotation issue and Cash is Cash is already a rotation issue. So you have got two defenders. You don't want to be playing a Burnley defender most weeks, right? So. That's probably exactly. something you can use to justify it in your mind that, like, let's move a defender now, that prime fixture. Um, yeah. We're going to need to make one in the next three game, three or four game weeks, right? When the shirt, when Botman's probably back, right? Anyway, so, yeah. yeah. Solid. Well, okay. solid. I should, I should. Yeah, and by doing it, I should, when it gets to it, and I even want to do Darwin to uh, Holland, I should, I, it should leave me enough money to move Lachelle's to Dan Byrne. So mm-hmm. I can cover that off at a future game week as well. Yep. Cool. So, yeah. Kind of puts me in that position. Um, but on to yours. Appreciate I've not like, I've not given you anything to say. I apologize. So freestyle. <laughs> I've always let the prompts, the prompts you put in are actually always like line with my thinking. So I've got I've got nothing unique. So it's uh, it's all good. But yeah, my team at the moment is the Bradga and shocking defense of Simicast, Saliba, and Gabriel. So currently Hoping for a nil-nil. Well, nil. it's nil-nil. Um, yeah. I doubt that, though, but, like, like uh, who knows? Um, Gordon Palmer Son, who's my captain at the moment, but, like, as I said earlier, that's up for debate. Salah, Watkins, Darwin, and Solanke, and then a bench of Ariola, Cash, Taylor, and um, Chuck Um So, um, yeah, one free transfer. I think I've got a few options here. I could... I'm confident Cash won't play, so I don't think I'm going to start him. I mean, it's probably a de- that's probably a debate to ha- be had whether I'd start Cash over Simicast, for example, and yeah. hope for the best, or start Cash over Gabriel and hope for the best. So um, there's a debate to have that because he's got the attacking upside, he's got the really easy fixture, but I really don't think he'll play, right? So I don't want to risk him just coming yeah. on as a sub because I think given the Villa defensive issues with like injuries and suspensions i think he'll come on right so not a big fan of that so like yeah for me it's um happy with the midfield happy ish with the attack given the absence of other options i would prefer not to have darwin but it's a very luxury move and you know, those man yeah. city boys they're not playing um so yeah cash out seems to be the obvious option for me then to bench one of Sabria, um, Saliba, Gabriel, or Simicast, which will be a bit of a debate. I could hedge my bets and bench Gabriel, keep Simicast. I will be tempted to bench Simicast, though, I think. I think Arsenal's defence I raked over Liverpool's defence, so I'm going to have to run, run the numbers on that. But yeah, if I was getting rid of cash, it's three, three or four options. So it would be cash to Pau Torres, cash to Trippier, or cash to Pedro Porro. Or to a lesser extent, it's it's not as exciting to move cash to Dambo, Danburn. So those would yeah. be the four. If I was to make a move, those would be the four options that I'd be playing. Um, it sounds super boring, and I kind of hate it because it's another example of me going back on moves I've already done the season. But probably Pal Torres makes the most sense because they're like he can rotate yeah. nicely with the Liverpool and Arsenal defenders, and he has those real right fixtures. Um, the one I kind of like is well, I do prefer. Poro and um, Trippier, because I have enough money in my bank to yeah. get Haaland back. 
for Darwin and keep Trippier in my team, right? Which is quite exciting. So Trippier, we just know, well, we said it all year. He's just so elite when he gets a return, right? He's getting three bonus every time, right? And um, that seems exciting, as does Pedro Porro, really. So, yeah, it's a, it's a real tough one for me. I think for you, it's a bit easier given your budget. The route is power for us. For yeah. me, it's, yeah. Is it it's a difference in it because you're like Gordon. Gordon's what six million, whereas I've got Saka, who's like eight point high yeah. eights. So yeah, you've got that that yeah. extra two like, two and a half million to play with. Exactly. So yeah, I, and I mean like the replacements for Son and Salah are going to be cheaper. So the obvious ones are Bowen and Saka, right? So they, those are downgrades, right? So my team, I can flex around quite nicely, right? So um, yeah, it's a tough one. I don't think I'll roll it. I, you you got you got the benefit of Lachaz, so a good defender. I don't have that, so I think I will want to bring in a better defender. And Cash is thinking out my team, so yeah. Um, Cash to Trippier Potter. sounds very interesting. Yeah, who would you go? Trippier, Poro, well, Torres. Let's ignore him. Poro. Poro. I feel like I'd go. Poro. No, you're not. Tri- <laughs> That's trouble, isn't it? Um. I like Trippier's fixtures for the next two, but then I hate the next three after that. Mm. Whereas Horro, I feel like will be steady, but the defense is playing every great. game. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's it. Like, I don't. You don't you, having Trippier, six point nine million, even when he's away at Man City, you've got to play him, and you'll you'll feel shit about it. Mm. Uh, whereas you know Horro's got some, and away at Villa, Villa's a tough place to go, and he's got that coming up as well. Um, whereas, yeah, you've got then Poro, who you'll probably be fairly happy with playing every game for the next six. Yeah, true. Uh, he's he's running better, better attacking numbers than Trippier as well. So, like, you've got to like, keep that into mind as well. But um, yeah. yeah, I've got nice luxury because Gordon and Palmer are there, eight million def- midfielders in disguise, right? So, I don't want to upgrade them to anyone. There isn't an upgrade, yeah. right? Yeah, because I, I know that Bowen is an upgrade on them, but like you know, of course, but like Son and Salah will have to disappear soon enough, and I'm happy for Bowen to be a replacement for Son over quite a few game weeks. Right, I'm I'm, I'm cool with that. Right, so um, I've got some money to to spend. Right, so um, yeah, um, yeah, three way. I think actually, like let's ignore Burn. It's, it's Torres versus. Pedro Porro versus Trippier. And I think just because of balance of attacking returns and upside and then price point, it's probably Porro who's leading it at the moment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Nice though. Nice to have 10 million in the bank. It's like, yeah. I was like, I was here for <laughs> Trippier and Hallands, but yeah, it's the Saka difference, right? And Saka's not been that impressive for me. Um, I'm, so I'm, hopefully I'm over the next couple of weeks, can get some. I'm not worrying about it, about a lack of Saka at all. Yeah. I think. That you're coming to his own, right? So, obviously, if I'm replacing Sol and Salah, my top midfielders that I don't have, they're probably Bowen and then Saka, of course. But I'm, I'm, yeah. I don't go into you know, a game I'm fearful of him, yeah. That's it, and that's it, right? Especially this week, you know, away at Anfield, that's a, that's a tough place to go. Um, but now on that, on that Son Salah piece, obviously, mm. you've got both, I've got both. Like you'll have a lot of money in both of those players, I imagine, and I appreciate their value will drop because a lot of people will sell both uh-huh. players in the, in the next coming weeks. But are you, are you kind of looking at it at the minute and thinking, well, I need to sell both, or you, is the one that you've got that much money and you're like, well, I'm gonna have to just bench them? Um, yeah, I think um, what I'll look at is is how the fixture runs in and around those game weeks, like extend, right? So if Spurs, for example, have a long-term bad fixture on Liverpool, I'd be more... Son is easy to get rid of than Salah, let's be honest. Right, Son is, yeah, Son is a lot absolutely. easier to get rid of. But I'll have a look at the fixtures. Like if, if, if Spurs are on a bad fixture run, medium term after Asian Cup, it'll be easy to get rid of Son, right? Um, I'll also be looking at double game week fixtures. Right, so there may be some announcements, right? By the time that they come back, we've got a decision point around, okay, where the blank game weeks, where's the double game weeks, what's the likelihood? So that, that will go into mine. So um yeah, Son is the easier sell for me. Um I think I'm quite happy benching one of them for that period, but I'll probably get rid of both of them. I'll probably get rid of yeah. both of them, really. Um 
just because like my bench options to get, together to aren't great. Rate. I've got I've got Chukameka yeah. who's not great, but like it's the same for everyone else. If you don't have Chukameka, you've got Archer, right? So I think it's yeah. the same applies for um, a lot of people that the bench options are weak. So um, I think, yeah, I mean, some would be my. If I take one out, it'd be Son, just because Sarah is so much better, and I've got more money tied in with him. But I think I'll probably end up losing both of them in successive weeks because I think. Yeah. No, actually, I might have two free transfers. I'll try and do a route that going into game week twenty-one when they're away, I'll have two free transfers. I think that will give me a good advantage. So I'll try and do one free transfer next game week, roll it yeah. in game week nineteen, which yeah. means I'm still got Darwin, but. Um, well, I'm either bringing Haaland in game week 19 or game week 20, right? So yeah, we'll yeah. see what. And the others are roll. Alvarez if Haaland's yeah. out like long term, but like I'll be bringing one of those in, and then hopefully I have two free transfers going into 21 where I can look at. I see Kevin De Bruyne is back. Let's let's bear in mind that you know, those game week 21 is like oh. end of Feb, well not end of Feb, beginning of um, Feb, right? So De Bruyne might be yeah, yeah. a nice city run, and Bowen of course, right? So yeah, I'll, I'll try and plan for two free transfers going into that game week 21. Get yeah. rid of both of them. Bruyne's an interesting one, isn't he? Like, I'm assuming next to nobody owns De Bruyne. So depends how much you want to gamble on him. You know, he's, he's obviously done this before where he's come back from injury, smashed about 27 assists over two game weeks and then got injured again. So it's well, um it's, it's an interesting it's one. just the break we've got now, isn't it? It's it's the break, it's it's the yeah. it's the winter break which we haven't had in the Premier League before, right? Yeah. It makes things different, right? You've got the whole of he could Return to training in early Jan, and then his his next fixture then is in Feb. You haven't had that yeah, before. Yeah. That's a lot of times to get thick, yeah. fit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be an interest. Yeah, how much is he now? Is he ten over ten million still? I think it's probably about a high nines, isn't he? High nines. So he's so again. It's it, 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 it could be a, a son to De Bruyne. No, there's there's a lot of options there. The De Bruyne comes into yeah. mind. Bowen, of course, Saka. Um, Bruno Fernandes, depending on, yeah, you know, get that out of your mouth. Oh, come on, he, he still returns really well. Um, yeah, just, just, just you know, not this season, not this season for, for people that have had him. The Corey, but the, 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 he's, he's said sorry. he's not going to the outcome, right? So he could be, he could be an option. Um, yeah. Can see that it's ever it's a nice note. and it, you mentioned Son about you know easy to get rid of Son if he has a bad fixture run when he comes back. Well, I sold Son as you'll know, and I sold him because he had a bad fixture run. He had Newcastle and he had Man City in his next three, and then he got a double return against both of them. So just uh, just a heads up, Son scores against the big teams. Um, so mm. bear it in mind. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but, but I think we make these decisions that, that you've got to like stick to your guns a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, you'd be a lot better place. I mean, it's easy to say in hindsight, but you'd be a lot better off if you did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It made sense when I did it. I, I just I tried to justify it last week, but um, the, but yeah, we'll, yeah, uh... yeah. I mean, the son, the son in and out makes more sense. It was the the Darwin, yeah, Solanke. Solanke. That, that, that was the killer. Like, but like, uh, I mean, it had some logic at the time, but like, it was less of the son yeah. stuff that killed you. It was more the Slank and Darwin stuff. But yeah. Well, I've got oh, plenty yeah. of time to make it back. Right. Um, but that brings us to the end of this one. But now we need to discuss what well, I think next week, obviously, we're very close to Christmas. Uh, I know you're yes. going away back. I'm going away. I've, I'm going back to visit some family um, down my neck of the woods. So the next fixture game week is like Boxing Day. And I very much doubt we'll have the chance to get together prior to that. So yeah. we'll probably do a little text between. I was going to say, if we, if we do some storm wrong at home, like either, either for you or yeah. for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, both, we're both having an absolutely terrible Christmas. Oh, we've decided to do this to cheer ourselves up. Um, <laughs> but we'll, I'll, you know, we'll, we'll send some text. We'll, I'll put something up a bit like I did, like we, we did when we went, uh, I was away um, on holiday. Well, I'll just do like a little talk to screen, but I'll we'll text between ourselves for for Matt versus Dave, so that can keep going. So we'll we'll still play that game, uh, but it might be that 
Uh, just for those of you listening, before the next game week, you get a video off us separately. You might get one, one from us or um, some solo stuff. And then we should be back uh, properly for game week 20. If the, I think that we've done the diaries and, and we should get one out before game week 20, I believe. Um, no, I think, yeah, I think yeah, this is game week 18, it. isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's yeah. the boxing yeah, 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 one that's yeah. difficult, man, given just like... Boxing one's yeah. the killer. Just... Um, my mum would kill me, you know. If I just got the laptop out on Christmas Day, I was like, I'm just chatting to my mate about the fantasy football. She she wouldn't invite me again, so I can't. I just can't do it. <laughs> so it's um, I'm snookered. That sounds like a bit of an incentive. You seem like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's but a good point. Actually, just... I'll pack my laptop. <laughs> for me, it's just like bringing this damn blue yeti everywhere. Like when I took it into like when I was away yeah. for work, and I brought it into the hotel room. It's a heavy old beast in it. These microphones. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it is. It is. But now we'll get something out between us. And uh, before we close up properly, some news. We've passed the 250 subscribers. We said last week we were on 245. We were hoping people could push us to get to 250. And we're now, on, well, last look, 251. So uh, thank you for, to any of the new subscribers that have joined us. Thank that's you. Yeah, that's, that's, that's some growth. Do you want to do a, a shout out to your mother in law? Best site. So look, look at, oh yeah, just to be now. like, check us out now. Check us out. It's, um, so, <laughs> so no, honestly, thank you for for those of you that did subscribe. If any of you are listening who aren't, and then you learn from us and what we what we do, feel free to drop that subscribe. It helps us help us out, and it just means other people can find us as well. So that's that's cool. So thank you for that, and thank you for listening. But Matt, appreciate your time as always, my friend. Uh, right. Enjoy your Christmas. I don't think I'll speak to you properly beforehand. So enjoy whatever you're doing. Um, and I'm sure I'll speak to you before the new year. But any any major plans? Nothing major. I was looking. I was looking actually at the the fixtures. It's like a nice uh, nice Boxing Day of uh, Amazon Prime games, and all the games are on. So you get so, them all. Uh, get every single. I watch the pick them. actually. They're, they're all playing at once, aren't they? So I, I, I can't, it's like yeah, it's annoying. I'll be Cross driving game. up the M6. Yeah, Ooh, I'll be driving up the M6, not... so I'll miss them Trivia. all. Trippier, trippier yeah. season that is, isn't it? So, uh, Solanke against yeah, that's Fulham. made your decision. Yeah, it, it kind of is actually. Off. <laughs> um, I've got to keep Nunes. Well, I'm keeping Nunes anyway, but yeah, Nunes against Burnley away. That's a nice little game. So, uh, yeah, that's a nice, uh, nice way to calm down and after a nice, a nice Christmas. It's like lots of food. You can just like chill out on a Boxing Day watching watching all those matches. Yeah, it'll be good. Yeah, I can't. I'm dri- I'll be driving home, so it's um, I'll be I'll be on the M6. I'll have I'll have the Liverpool game on the radio if it's almost a drive, but uh, I won't be able to watch any of it unfortunately. But I'll make sure my bus team is set. Christmas Day, come collect locked in, uh, Boxing Day morning, and then and then uh, see I'll, what. See I'll be text. I'll be texting you with like goal alert. So like, hopefully you've got. Hopefully you're not using like Google Maps on your phone, like as you're going up, because you'll see all me like popping up. On WhatsApp, ding so. ding. Just uh, uh yeah, just Saka, road rage. Red yeah. Saka's red card. What yeah. <laughs> yeah, somebody's smashing the horn on the M6 because Saka's got a red card. It's probably me. <laughs> um but oh enjoy. Enjoy whatever it is you're doing. Um I look forward to those updates and yeah, we'll <laughs> we'll pick up ahead of the new year. But um same to you home. If we don't we might not get the chance to speak to you before Christmas. So enjoy whatever you're doing with you and your families, and hopefully we'll catch you on the other side of it. Thank you for joining us today. And no doubt we will speak to you soon.